Hello, my name is Kirk Chalet with the NTT Data Racing Team, and welcome to our program today. Joining us today is Brian Welling and Chris from the Chris Simmons from Chip Ganassi Racing, and we wanted to spend a few minutes with you all and uh, catch up on uh, various initiatives that the team has been busy doing in this uh, very eventful uh, 2020. Yeah, I'm Chris Simmons, uh, Director of Performance for Chip Ganassi Racing, which is a new position for me this year. And my job is to help all the different parts of the company uh, work together and improve our performance and get uh, NTT some wins this year. My name is Ryan Welling. Um, I'm the support engineer on the number 10 NTT data IndyCar driven by Felix Rosenquist. And my main responsibilities are all the electronics on the race car and during the race, I do all the fuel calculations. Um, so we know when to pit the, pit the race car. Chris, uh, is, as I mentioned, uh, a lot's been going on this year uh, all around the world and it's been impacting everybody in, in different ways. Um, but before we kind of get into uh, other parts of the agenda today, give us a little background about your organization and your team and, and, um, and some of the things that, that you do on behalf of the team. Yeah, so as, uh, as the team here, we obviously racing is our main job, but to do that, we have a lot of different departments that feed into preparing the race cars and, and uh, supporting our partners like NTT Data and then NTT Group. Um, so through the winter, we're doing all kinds of projects, trying to make the cars faster, uh, as well as look better on the track. Uh, all that was coming to, to culmination at St. Pete uh, when, when the COVID-19 pandemic struck and we didn't get to get our first race off the ground. So uh, in the meantime, we've we've uh, some of our projects that we're, we were working on for the Indy 500 have been pushed back a bit. So we're trying to get those pushed through the system and also been doing some other projects to help with the uh, with the pandemic. This year is uh, also an eventful year for Tim Ganassi Racing as it's your 30th anniversary. Uh, you all have a long history with the NTT IndyCar series, but also tell us about the other forms of motorsports you all compete in. Yeah, Chip Ganassi Racing uh, as a group uh, competes in a number of different arenas. Uh, out of our Indianapolis shop, Indy, IndyCar Racing is the main thing, but we've run uh, 24 Hours of Le Mans and other sports car uh, series out of here, including Daytona 24. Um, I'm very successful in those. Uh, NASCAR team out of North Carolina. Um, and we've, we're going to be getting into Extreme E in the future as well. So. Anything that, that races around the world, we're interested in doing it, and uh, that's uh, that's our goal to go fast and and uh, do it safely and uh, worldwide. So, as you said, this year is uh, you know the goal is always the same to uh, you know be champions in all those disciplines you all compete in. Uh, as you all primarily also focus on the NTT IndyCar series. Tell us about some of, you know, Chris, starting with you and Brian, you can also give us some input. Uh, you know, how was the, you know, leading up into 2020 and some of your preparations in the off season and how was it kind of shaping up before the first race? Going into 2020 uh, on the IndyCar side, we always have two goals, uh, win the Indy 500 and win the championship. Uh, we go about it probably like a lot of other companies do. We look at where we were weak the year before uh, and try to strengthen those areas. And we look at where we were strong and try to make sure we stay strong in those areas. So um, that can be at a certain track type. Um, we were quite strong on street circuits last year, for example, or it could be in a certain uh, performance area like our cars are always good uh, on top speed, but maybe not quite as quick in some of the slower corners. So we look at all those different uh, pieces of data and try to improve our performance year on year uh, while maintaining our strong seats. Brian, from your perspective, uh, you know, how did you see the, you know, going into the, the start of the year and, and things were coming together before all the changes? It, it, it was going really well. We, we were a two car team last year and we, we moved up to a three car team this year. So integrating a, a lot of the crew from the IMSA side into the IndyCar projects uh, was, was going well. We had a few new people around, um, getting everybody up to speed. Uh, the first. Uh, test uh, at uh, Sebring and, and Coda was, was going well. We were, we were ready to, to start it off well at uh, St. Pete. But obviously, you know, we all started 2020 thinking, you know, we are going to, you know, have these uh, goals and objectives. You all saying, you know, proceeding for another championship that was going to begin in, in March with the NTT IndyCar Series, the first event in St. Petersburg, Florida. 
then the world changed. So Chris, you want to give your perspective? Uh, I mean, you all literally were on site at the race uh, and then uh, seems like the world closed almost overnight. Your thoughts? Yeah, we were on site and we were super excited to see uh, Felix compete in the NTT car at, at St. Pete. Uh, you know, did such a good job there last year as a rookie. Uh, we think he's gonna have a really special year this year. And we're excited to get that going. And like you said, overnight, it uh, it shut down. We we thought we were going to be able to go in and race without fans, and then even that got shut down. So it then became a case of uh, getting everybody home safely, uh, getting our, our cars and equipment back to Indy safely, uh, making sure that all of our computers and everything were, were uh, back at the shop and, and connected to the network so we could access that data from home and continue working from home uh, over these past 10 weeks here. We, once we got all that secure, we started looking at how, how can we help uh, with the COVID-19 fight since we're gonna be shut down on racing for a while. And we came up with a whole brainstorm list of projects that we could potentially help with, everything from ventilators, uh, ventilator parts, uh, PPE, all that kind of stuff. We looked at a whole lot of it. And in the end, we ended up making um, mostly some PPE uh, for the local hospitals and, and for some other uh, clinics around the country. And Brian and the team, obviously that's an amazing, you know, ability to, you know, pivot from, you know, one day, you know, worrying about championships and winning races, the next day, you know, making a contribution that's impacting everyday lives. So how did that just decision-making process come about? Was that kind of a, a decision across the whole organization or is that just kind of a few employees really kind of rolling up their sleeves? Uh, walk us through kind of the thought process and the timelines of how that all uh, went from zero to 60, so to speak. And Brian, Chris, you can go first. Yeah. Or, or. Well, I was talking, It was we were back from St. Pete for say a week or so. Um, and then I was talking to Chris on the phone and I think he was actually talking to the NASCAR team, our NASCAR team down south and the idea of the, the the face shields came up and i think then a small group of us um, at, at the indianapolis shop got together um, talked about uh, a few ideas that we could do um, mainly because part of it was we had to stay at home uh, so we couldn't go into the shop um, to do a lot of this stuff so that changed the dynamic quite a bit so through the the process um, uh, three of us have uh, small 3d printers i have a a CNC um, that I usually do with woodworking that can cut essentially sheets of plywood out. So between those those things that we can do at home, the, the face shields came up um, that we started printing those almost immediately. Um, then a couple of the guys in the shop that, that got involved did a little bit of research and came up with the these hospital hoods um, that we've been uh, manufacturing. Um, and those are for the hospitals that use whenever you ventilate or intubate somebody, put them on a ventilator. It's kind of like we were talking about an upside down fish tank uh, so that the, the, the doctor that's doing the innovation is uh, separated from the patient so nothing's transmitted in between them. So we started manufacturing that stuff and um, whenever Chris first uh, talked about it, I think I got um, maybe seven kits worth of, uh, of plastic that we, that we use for the, the hospital hoods and I kind of thought that might have been it. And, then another 10 rolled in then he called me and said okay 20 more is coming so we, we ended up doing quite a few of the of the hospital hoods and then with the the face shields again i thought it would have been a, a bit of a small run and we ended up with i think i've done cut over 1100 um face shields at the moment um some most of it about half of it's for the the ganassi shop and then chris organized uh, a, a way to get some out to people in town that that needed it as well so it's, it's been quite an effort. Hats off to you, Brian, and, and uh, applause all around to so many people. It sounds like you've been contributing. I mean, Chris, for you, from your perspective, you know, you went from being a director of performance and, you know, making sure that the team is a unified approach to performing fast on track. And in this case, for you now, all of a sudden, your program managing something, you know, very different in the day-to-day. -day. How did you kind of take your, the approach on that? Yeah, it changed a little bit. Uh, I went from making sure that uh, the supply chain, chain to bring parts to the car was operating on time to trying to find supplies to make PPE and getting them here in time before we ran out of uh, 3D printer filament or uh, the parts for the face shields, the, the elastic to hold them on your head. Uh, just finding all that stuff and getting it 
in the in house was was a big challenge. We were able to to keep all that stuff in stock and and really use kind of the same skills and same responses that we would for racing. We just looked at who has what skills and how can we make the best product and get it out to the people that need it as quick as possible. Um, we we knew we were never going to make face shields as a living, um, but the supply chain was broken at the time. And we were able to fill a hole in that supply chain and get get those parts out to the people that need them most uh, as quickly as possible. That's what we do in racing. We find problems and we solve them as quickly as we can. Obviously, this process is uh, always in constant need since you know no telling when this is going to end. But you all at the same time are trying to run your day to day business as the the series is evolving and and keeping that nimbleness. Uh, which is something you did before, but I guess now you've been tested in, in many different ways and, and shown resiliency with it. What times have you learned things through this process that maybe like, hey, that's uh, something that we will continue to do going forward that really was uh, a way to collaborate better or a way to share information and in, in how we you know transmit items through one part of the team to the next and stuff. I think our partnership with NTT is always, is. We've always been a, a technological company anyway, but it's helped us uh, see what we can do um, IT wise. And we were quite lucky that our IT team, IT team had rolled out Microsoft Teams literally a few weeks before this COVID panic hit. So we were quite well positioned to switch over to uh, telecommuting and doing meetings through Teams. Um, I think we've all done them through different platforms now also, but something I'm sure everyone at NTT is familiar with. We were able to, to use the technology to keep doing our job as best we could. And we have meetings, feels like nonstop some days, but weekly engineering meetings to go over what projects we're all working on from home. We're able to remotely log into our servers at the shop. And now that we've been allowed back into the shop, it's almost, it's almost uh, no different working at home versus working at the shop. Yeah, it's quite quite different now from from what we were doing. Now, like Chris said, uh, with the rollout of Teams, uh, being able to communicate like we are um, from home to the shop or from our home to somebody else's home within the team, um, it, it, the continuity stays very very nice, um, so that we can communicate with each other. Um, unlike you would on the telephone, seeing somebody's face is, is quite quite a, an advantage actually uh, in doing this and. And throughout the community, really, we've, we've got a lot of contacts that I don't think we would have normally had um, that we can maybe continue to help uh, people that need the help because we can do things kind of quickly from design to manufacturing. You've mentioned several times about how NTT data and the, is, is helped you with your kind of continued success. But, you know, how do you see from a philosophical standpoint, you know, starting with you, Chris, about the, the partnership with NTT data and, and, and some of the value that, that it, the partnership brings for you? Well, when we got into this situation, we, we looked at all these different options we could do um, for PPE and stuff. And we talked to Chip about, hey, are you okay if we if we go down this route? He said, yeah, absolutely. And he talked to people uh, at NTT and at and some of our other partners and everybody was just completely on board the whole time uh, with doing everything we could to, to help out with the, uh, in the COVID epidemic. It, it makes you realize how strong the partnership is not just putting the NTT name on the side of the car, it's, it's supporting us in what we do and supporting each other and uh, having that synergistic effect of helping each other get, go forward. And it's, you know, it's not just with NTT, we've, we've had to work with all of our suppliers and partners um, on timing of, of bills, on invoices, on delaying shipments, uh, on keeping things on schedule. So we are ready to race the Indy 500 later in the year. Uh, I think it's made everybody take a look back at the timelines and how long it takes to get things done and really optimizing that supply chain I think in the future will be more efficient going forward. Brian how have you seen the partnership uh, evolve with NTT data and, and how has it supported you and some of your colleagues uh, in your endeavors? A few years ago when we started the Hitoi shirt um, on the NTT uh, data car um, I was involved heavily with that and just learning how NTT went about a project and then combining it with, with what we do um, to learn back and forth. I, I let, met so many people from NTT just in that project a couple of years ago that just learning the, the processes that NTT employs to 
to make their business work, to try to take as much of, I, as, of that as I can to, to help our business and hopefully vice versa. What they've learned from us on how we, how we solve problems is hopefully helped both sides uh, of the equation here. Well, on behalf of the NTT team and the NTT data team that we definitely want to say, uh, you know, thank you for your efforts uh, all through uh, this year and in our partnership. And then, and I, especially for uh, the miraculous work that you guys have been doing as a group to, uh, you know, help the greater community. Um, and, and last, uh, you know, yeah, let's uh, go racing here and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys on track. And uh, thank you very much for the time today. Thank you very much. We can't wait to see you guys at the, at the racetrack in the near future. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brian.